So I'll go ahead and post our agenda in the chat. The agenda has a lot of important links, including uh, to the voting forms, which will open when it's time. Um, so tonight we are going to um, have two forums, one for District 1, San Jose City Council District 1, and one for San Jose City Council District 5. We will also be um, voting on a resolution that's calling for um, Rolando Bonilla to end his campaign as uh, for San Jose City Council District 5 and to resign from the San Jose Planning Commission due to domestic abuse allegations that were recently published. Uh, Rolando um, declined our invitation to participate in this forum uh, prior to that news story breaking. Um, so he will not be here tonight, but we'll visit that resolution at the bottom of our agenda. Um, we did just get word that Ramona Snyder will not be participating in the D1 forum. Um, so this will be a conversation with Rosemary, um, and then we can uh, vote after that. The format uh, for the forum will be a one minute introduction from the candidates and followed by moderator questions where um, each candidate will get a one minute answer. After that, we'll take questions from attendees and then the candidates will have one minute to close. Our moderator tonight is Kathy Tran and I will be doing the um, timing. I will simply unmute and say time when uh, the time is up. So just one second here, got logged out. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Um, so Kathy's gonna take it over. A uh, quick introduction with Kathy. Uh, she graduated with a bachelor's degree in political science with a minor in philosophy from San Jose State, State University. She was selected as a fellow for the Panetta Congressional Internship Program in 2016. She worked for State Assembly member Evan Lowe as a field representative in his district office and served as a community li liaison in San Jose District 10 and the city of Campbell. Kathy currently works for IFPTE Local 21, a public sector union that represents 11,000 workers throughout the Bay Area as a communication and political specialist in the South Bay region. Uh, so Kathy, thank you for being here and moderating our discussion tonight. Thanks, Jenny. Great to be here and seeing everybody tonight. It's awesome that folks are really engaged and involved to hear from um, our candidates who are running for office um i am gonna go ahead and kick it off if everyone's ready oh we have a whole bunch of people joining right now <laughs> um but i'm going to go ahead and get started um and ask rosemary some questions um how effective has measure a the county affordable housing bond been in your district what specific actions will you take to address the housing crisis and sorry to interrupt, Kathy, just one second while I mute everyone. Um, and Rosemary, if you want to start with a one minute introduction, um, and then we can move on to that question. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you for the question. So my name is Rosemary Kamei. Uh, I'm running for San Jose City Council in district number one, which is on the west side of San Jose. Um, I'm running to bring my proven experience as well as my accountability and transparency to City Hall. My vision for our community is to address affordable housing, homelessness, public health and safety, and really uh, look at uh, city services and trying to improve city services. I am a lifelong public servant, uh, a former nonprofit community executive. I also had been an adjunct professor at San Jose State University and a small business owner for 15 years. Uh, most recently, many of you might know, I've been uh, engaged in the local community as a trustee of the Santa Clara County Office of Education. I also am president of my local neighborhood association, the Baker West Neighborhood Association. And I know that the district is changing and growing, and I look forward to being a voice for our community to ensure that it continues to thrive. And I appreciate your consideration and uh, your support for a vote. And should I go right into the question? 
Yeah, if you if you don't want me to, if you already have it, <laughs> I, I love that attitude. <laughs> well, um, you know, um, well, maybe you could repeat it for those that maybe came in a little bit later. So repeat the question and then I'll go ahead and, and respond. Yeah, absolutely. How effective has Measure A, the county affordable housing bond, been in your district? What specific actions will you take to address the housing crisis? So number one, I was uh, very much in favor of the, of the bond. I think that it has created uh, many housing units that had not been uh, uh, possible. So I wanna say that yes. Now in terms of specifically in district one, I just um, had the privilege of going to see a combination of uh, units that will be built. They haven't been built yet, but they had been uh, sort of a, a combination of the measure eight funds from um, uh, the county, as well as the city of San Jose, as well as being able to get a nonprofit developer to combine and build it. And it's gonna be close to a school. So it's gonna be for fam low income families. So to me, it's a, it's a great start. I think we have a ways to go, but I'm really looking forward to see what are the potential uh, partnerships there may be that we could um, continue to grow the, the housing stock, especially for affordable housing. Thank you. Um, the next question I have is, the COVID pandemic has created a volatile environment for businesses, especially small businesses. How will you support affected businesses during future waves of infection? So, you know, one of the things that I'm very mindful of is um, how small businesses are really uh, part of the, the, the fabric of our community. And they're also a great way to create new jobs in the community. Uh, and I think that there's been a focus on the larger uh, companies, the Googles, the NVIDIAs, and, and, and I think that economic development really needs to focus uh, on uh, small businesses, women-owned businesses, minority businesses to be able to help them uh, succeed. So that is an area that I'm very, very interested in. I know that there are some in District 1 uh, sort of a coalition of businesses. I think we really need to rejuvenate that and uh, really spend the time to be able to help them grow and, and be able to provide some of the services that perhaps they may not be able to have on their own. Thank you. Um, the next question I have for you is, how do you view criminal justice policies in San Jose? What are three specific changes you would make? Um, so for, for many, many years, I think that um, even in my role as a trustee, I have noticed, especially in uh, juvenile justice, where there uh, has been a, a decline uh, because there have been many efforts, especially with the school district and others in our community to be able to um, divert or to take uh, the younger, younger people out of the criminal justice system. And, uh, and I think that that has worked really, really well. I mean, I can remember uh, years ago when we had 600 young incarcerated youth in, in juvenile hall. Now we have less than a hundred. I think that's very good. And I think that um, that is an area that uh, we need to continue to work towards in terms of uh, not incarcerating uh, if it's possible. Um, but I also think that um, our own biases and I think that training uh, needs to happen. Uh, so that we're not incarcerating our uh, uh, black and brown uh, uh, people uh, because the rates are so much higher. So I think that we really need to take a look at that and really need to uh, make an assessment and use uh, the data that, that shows us uh, you know, what has been happening over the years. I don't know that I have a third one quite yet, but I certainly will keep that in mind. Thank you, Rosemary. I have one final question before um, turning it over to anybody else uh, in the audience to, to ask. 
Um, the P, the C, PUC, and Governor Gavin Newsom are proposing to limit discounts on solar-powered homes, as well as how much money people receive when selling extra energy to, to utility companies. Is this just a give back to the utility companies? <sighs> you know, I, I think that it's unfortunate um, that we can't continue to uh, expand uh, and, 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 and do more for solar. Um, I think that, you know, when you think about the energy use and the potential, especially where we live in California, we really want to encourage as much uh, renewable uh, uh, power as, as possible. Um, I, <clears throat> I, haven't, uh, I haven't gone into looking at all of the details of, of what is being proposed, but I certainly believe that, uh, that we, should, we should encourage and give the people uh, the discounts and continue to give the discounts as opposed to uh, giving it to the utility. I think that um, we need to keep it as an incentive so that uh, we continue to do even more solar. I mean, I think that the potential to do more solar is still there. Thanks for your answer. Um, so for folks that have any questions to ask um, Rosemary, our candidate, I'm gonna ask if you can raise your hand and I can call on you. Um, if that's okay, Jenny. Sounds great. I see a hand from Carrick. Yeah, hi, uh, thanks so much for being open to questions. Um, and thanks for uh, coming to this, Rosemary. I was wondering uh, how, and I, I know that hypotheticals are, are difficult, but uh, just wondering how you would have voted on the most recent billboard uh, vote that was held in the city council. And for anyone not familiar, uh, a vote came before the city council that it, it had, the saga had been going on for like two years and it, gone to the airport commission and back and back again and back to the city council. Uh, basically the city council ended up approving four huge digital billboards at the airport that you would see on the 101. I'm just curious how you think you might have voted for something like that. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for the question. So, you know, um, the thing about digital billboards is that, um, you know, it, it's, it, it can be a distraction I think that um, that it is it is a little bit unfortunate uh, that um, that uh, that was approved. I I feel that uh, you know the I understand that the city wants to be able to create revenue and have revenue streams. I probably would have gone in a different direction, uh, and and certainly uh, would have preferred uh, not having a digital billboard. I think that it causes. Uh, issues with distractions. I also think it causes issues with, um, you know, sort of like the the environmental view that is uh, sort of um, taken over by these billboards. So uh, I would have preferred to see something else. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. I think we have time for maybe like two more questions if anybody wants to ask Rosemary. I see Helen Chapman has uh, your hand up. Thank you. Hi, Rosemary. Um, what is your position on the commercial linkage fee as a way of uh, paying for affordable housing? City Council approved it, but do you think the fee is high enough? You know, I, 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 I'm not sure if it's, uh, if it's high enough or, I mean, I think that one of the things to, to see is um, what are its effects and whether or not it's, it's giving us the intended results that we wanna see, right? Um, I mean, I think that it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a good idea to be able to have revenue streams, to be able to assist in affordable housing, uh, but I always uh, like to see whether or not uh, it has been able to generate enough or to, to be able to make a difference. So I think that I would like to have that data first and uh, then I can make a more informed decision. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think I saw Lillian's hand up and then Sean after. So go ahead, Lillian. 
Sorry, we're muted. muted. Pardon me, I'm so sorry. I used to live in District 1 until a couple of years ago, <clears throat> right around Country Lane. So mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the area. And when we sold our mom's house, um, I believe that the, the new owners are going to refurbish it and build on it and continue to build on it. So my question is, you know, in good, in good faith and, and feeling good about selling that house, um, what are you, what, what is your uh, opinion or what do you think should be done with what I call affordable housing? Since affordable is a misnomer, it actually means that you have to make two and a half to three times the rent to be able to afford affordable housing, which in my circumstance would almost have make you have to be a millionaire. And, and secondly, uh, how do you incorporate the black and the brown community into places like District 1, which are very expensive to live in? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I uh, agree with you, Lillian, that um, it is a misnomer. I think afford when I hear affordable housing, and I hear how much you have to pay, it is, it is really, really high. So I think that um, uh, we live in an area where, you know, we keep talking about affordable housing for a long period of time, but is it really affordable? And affordable to whom? And at what uh, income level? Uh, I think that, uh, many of us have tried to uh, promote the ideas of uh, working together to be able to leverage resources. And I think that, um, uh, I think we need to do more of that. Uh, and I think that working with the county, working with other cities, there might be opportunities to bring down the cost. Uh, and uh, the biggest, the biggest um, expense is going to be the land. And I think that as different government agencies work together, there might be ways to make it more affordable. But I, but I, but I totally agree with you. I think that um, it's, it's tough. It's really, really tough in terms of, of bringing, uh, uh, you know, as you mentioned, black and brown people into our community. I think that I welcome that. I also welcome the big companies hiring uh, our local uh, residents so that they have these very good jobs uh, to be able to afford some of the, the, um, the high cost of, of, uh, of living here. So um, that's why I believe in uh, ensuring that, that wage, we have good wages and prevailing wages um, so that people are able to, to afford to uh, live here. Thanks for the question, Lillian. Um, I'm going to call on Sean to ask your question next. Hello. Uh, mountain wildfires are, uh, are a danger and, uh, and have to be a concern for um, everybody uh, in the Valley, clearly. Um, our CZU firefighters are actually in uh, danger of losing uh, access to uh, um, uh, what they say is a key uh, firefighting tool, um, road and rail access into um, uh, these huge uh, redwood forests. Um, five local mountain firefighter, um, fire chiefs and a fire director made a public statement um, about this and uh, they, they're looking for some help so they can continue to uh, help us. Um, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to take a look into this and um, work with the local uh, fire chiefs. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, when I was at the water board, one of the things that uh, we we're very well aware of is, especially in the upper watersheds, where uh, you start getting into the hills and the mountains, and there's a lot of foliage. Um, when I uh, was at the water district, we worked very, very closely with Cal Fire, Santa Clara County Fire. Um, we also work with the local community, uh, with the Fire Safe Council, uh, to be able to uh, do prevention uh, and to be able to assist the community to also be involved. So the answer to your question is, given the changes in climate and given the, um, the possibility of uh, even more wildfires, 
Absolutely. I, I think that that's an important thing to be able to uh, have access, create the access, and also educate your community as to, you know, what are the things that you can do for creating defensible spaces? I can put a link um, in the uh, chat to their, uh, uh, their, their public statement. Thank you. I appreciate it, Sean. Thank you so much. I think we have time for one more question, if anyone has it. Otherwise, I'll pass it back to Jenny. OK, well, thank you very much, Rosemary and Kathy. Um, so I will be sharing our voting form. Um, as I mentioned in the chat um, at the, and at the start of this meeting, uh, Ramona canceled um, an hour before the meeting started. Uh, so we just heard from Rosemary. I'm going to share the ballot for voting um, in the chat here. And according to our bylaws, it requires 60% uh, of the vote from members in good standing. Uh, so any uh, member that is up to date uh, to vote. Uh, so if Rosemary receives or, or Ramona receives 60% of the vote, uh, she will win the club's endorsement. Uh, the voting form is in the chat and we'll go ahead and give a couple minutes on the clock to um, allow everybody a chance to vote. And if you have trouble accessing the forum or if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to post in the chat or um, even unmute yourself if that's easier. Can I ask a question while you're totaling the vote or is oh, yeah. that? Um, so Rosemary, um, can, do you, would you update us on um, how your fundraising is going and also volunteer efforts? And if there are ways that people who support you in this meeting want to um, do that, how they can get involved? Thank you so much for that. Um, yes, so um, if you'd uh, like to uh, get involved, Rosemary for San Jose at gmail.com. Just send me, uh, uh, you know, your your information. We'd love to have you come out and and walk or call or whatever you're comfortable with. I certainly things are going really well. Uh, I spend every uh, weekend uh, walking precincts. If you want to walk with me, come walk with me. Uh, and uh, and certainly in terms of the fundraising. Uh, we, uh, we'd love to have you support us financially. Uh, we, de we do have a, a ceiling limit uh, of $700, uh, but anything, you know, $10, $25, $100, whatever you can really makes a difference. And this is going to be a super fast race. Uh, and uh, so I hope you can join us in any way you can. So I'll put, I'll, I will put my information in the, uh, in the chat. Thank you, Rosemary. So we'll leave the voting form open for another 30 seconds. Um, again, if you have any trouble, uh, feel free to message me in the chat or uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. We'll be counting votes here shortly. Okay, the voting form is now closed and um, the overwhelming number of folks voted for Rosemary. Uh, so uh, congratulations, Rosemary, on earning our club's endorsement. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to working with you uh, 
and uh, taking this in June. So thank you. Thank you. And we'll look for um, your contact information in the chat. Um, okay, so we can go ahead and move on to uh, District 5. District 5 plus or minus a candidate. Uh, no, they're all here. Oh, okay. Great. Awesome. All right. Okay. So we, we can go ahead and get started. Um, to our candidates that just joined, um, why don't we go ahead and start with introductions? Um, everybody gets a minute to introduce themselves. Um, I'm gonna call on the first candidate that I see, and that candidate is Nora. So Hello. if you can go ahead and give us a one minute introduction about yourself and why you're running. Thank you. My name is Nora Campos, and I served on the city council in 2001 to 2010. Then I went to the state assembly and served there for six years, representing half the well, majority of the city of San Jose. And I'm a mother of a 13-year-old, and I, um, in my spare time, enjoy helping and working with my neighborhood leaders um, to address issues that face us here in East San Jose. I'm running uh, to bring my leadership to the city council to make sure that we create a middle class, uh, keep it here, and then also help bring resources to our families that are working hard to try to make a living here. I'm going to tackle affordable housing. I did it the first time around where I was able to create 3,000 affordable units, not market rate, affordable units in District 5. I'm going to work on making sure that we build our uh, infrastructure with our city employees so that they can uh, make sure that when they go to work, that they have a secure job with benefits. Um, that's what I'm imagining for this district and making sure that we house the unhoused population in East San Jose. I've shared this before with some of you that may be on the, the Zoom meeting that I was the author of the first tiny homes in California. And I was able to get the city of San Jose to pilot the program. Nora, so, that's time. Today. Thank you. And we, we gave you a minute 30, so we'll uh, extend the courtesy to the other two candidates as well. Thanks, Nora. I see next on my screen, Peter, if he can go next. Um, one minute, 30 second, in, or yeah, introduction. Hello, fellow Democrats. It's a pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, I wanna thank the Silicon Valley Democratic Club for coordinating this important forum. Uh, many of you know me, but for those who do not, uh, my name is Peter Ortiz. I'm currently the president of the Santa Clara County Board of Education. I'm running for San Jose City Council to be a steadfast advocate for our working families who have many times been forgotten here in East San Jose. Uh, our campaign for city council is about revitalizing our neighborhoods of East Side to make sure that we are improving public safety and sparking a renaissance of business, art, and culture within District 5. I believe that through policies that focus on people first solutions, we can successfully take preventative measures uh, to address the, the rising causes of social problems in, in East San Jose and provide positive solutions for our, our many populations who are oftentimes forgotten. You know, when I'm elected to the city council, I'll be a strong advocate for our uh, brothers and sisters and folks in the labor movement, um, our houseless community, um, as well as be a champion for affordable housing throughout the district. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, lastly, we have Andres. Andres, um, can you get a, your introduction? Sure. Thank you for this opportunity to be before you. Uh, many of you know me. I've worked with many of you. I've had the privilege to work in different capacities within our Democratic Party Central Committee. And so it's for that reason I'm here asking for your support. Uh, I've had the opportunity to serve on the Alamo Rock School Board since 2012. I've been putting in work there uh, in different capacities, in different uh 
to with regard to different um, uh, things that we've done, such as advocating for working families, uh, making sure that we're putting forward PLAs that are ensuring that uh, work gets done, that people that are doing the work are, are able to live here. Um, uh, policies such as uh, moving forward, uh, local hiring practices, uh, things that are the first of its kind. And I'm very proud to have worked very closely with organizations like IBEW, uh, unions uh, like IBW and, and other groups uh, with whom I've collaborated to bring forward policies that ensure that uh, our jobs are being done right and that they're coming in within budget and that uh, uh, the jobs are ensuring that people can have living wages. I'm very proud of the work that I've already done. I'm looking forward to continuing that work on the city council. I'm a native of East San Jose, born and raised, and I'm very, very proud of the fact that I've been here my entire life. We've been putting in work in, with the community to, to ensure that we're moving our community forward. Um, with regard to the Democratic Party, I've had the privilege of serving uh, on the, as a as a, a guest. I've, Andres, you know, that's visiting. fine. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm going to be asking um, a question uh, to all three of you, and then I'm going to call on uh, one person to answer. Everybody gets about a minute. Um, it's the same question, so we'll just uh, go by order. Um, so I'm going to ask the question first and then pick on someone, okay? Um, how effective has Measure A, the county affordable housing bond, been in your district? What specific actions will you take to address the housing crisis? Um, so I'm going to call on Andres first. I think Measure A has been affected countywide. We've uh, had an, a significant investment of approximately $700 million already uh, that's gone into supportive housing. And so that's great work that's been done. I appreciate the leadership of Supervisor Cindy Chavez, who's endorsed my candidacy because she knows that I'm the right partner to make sure that we can move these types of the policies forward to ensure that we can tackle this housing crisis. So um, I'm very appreciative of the work that's been done with Measure A. Uh, we have money that the city that the city has also set aside uh, for that, and actually it's come from the taxpayers. Looking forward to continuing to move in a positive direction. Um, you asked specifically how it effective how effective it's been in District Five. I think that District Five has done its fair share uh, to provide support, uh, much like District Seven as well, and know it fairly close, having worked there as chief of staff to Councilmember Maya Sparza, who's also endorsed my can my candidacy as well. Um, I think that we've done our part. Uh, downtown Next is probably time. the only one. Okay. So. Thanks, Jenny. Thank Thanks, you. Andres. Um, I'm going to ask Peter next. Great. So I think that uh, Measure A has definitely been a extremely useful tool, and it, it has brought us brought in a lot of money from the taxpayers in order to invest in affordable housing. Um, when it comes to how it has been utilized in, in um, District 5, has it been utilized? Yes, there has been uh, affordable housing built in District 5, but I don't think it's nowhere near enough, right? I don't feel like uh, any city council district can do just its fair share. Uh, this is one of the uh, most uh, uh, drastic housing crisis, homeless crisis uh, that the country is facing, and we're living smack dab in the middle of it. That's why we have um, a, a rising homeless population, people living on the streets, in our parks, and in, in our um, business corridors, right? Uh, unless we are prioritizing investing in sustainable housing for the homeless, uh, um, uh, sustainable housing for domestic violence victims, um, uh, affordable housing, right, uh, in all areas of the city, right? We're not fully using Measure A to the to its full extent, and I think that this uh, time go, got some ways to go in order to do so. Thanks, Peter. And lastly, Nora. Yeah, thank you for that question. Since uh, affordable housing has been something I've been working on for the past couple of decades. One of the things that I think that we need to start thinking about when we're moving, you know, uh, policies like uh, Measure A is that we need to think of how we connect uh, a co component that actually will make the purchase if we're doing affordable housing, not just rental, but affordable housing for purchase so that it really is affordable for our working class families to be able to buy a, a, a unit or a house or a townhome so that they could start building their equity for their families. 
I think we need to think outside of the box. And I did that when I was on the city council, we used the redevelopment and we were able to build Mediposas, which actually housed um, individuals that were, in, that were firefighters, bus drivers, teachers, were able to buy their first home and a lot of them still live there. And that's what we have to do. People should have the opportunity to be able to buy a home in San Jose. And, and I may be a little different, but I think that when we think about affordable housing, That's yes, fine. Me, thank you. <laughs> Thanks all. Um, these are all very important questions. And so it's, when we have a lot of time, it, you know, we can talk about it all day, but um, I'm gonna ask another uh, question for everybody. Um, also really important. The COVID pandemic has created a volatile environment for businesses, especially small businesses. How will you support affected businesses during future waves of infection? Um, I'm gonna first ask uh, Peter to answer this question. Thank you so much, Kathy. This is ex uh, an extremely important question because unfortunately many of our small businesses were uh, often forgotten uh, by many forms of government throughout the pandemic. Uh, during COVID, uh, I led the charge in, in partnership with Councilmember Carrasco uh, to advocate for direct uh, grants to go to small businesses, uh, specifically for marketing, storefront beautification, um, in order to attract uh, uh, new customers. Um, as this uh, pandemic is prolonged, I'll, and as council member, I will again bring to the budget cycle direct grants to go for businesses who have been impacted and have lost income due to the pandemic. That's, that, that's what they need. They need direct grants to supplement their loss of income um, in order to help fund their employees' payroll. Thank you for your uh, response, Peter. Um, Nora? Um, thank you. I will uh, continue to work with State Controller Betty Yi. I was able to work with her office to bring her to do a seminar here in the city of San Jose where small businesses, predominantly we focus on East San Jose, on Alum Rock and uh, Santa Clara on the information and the grants that they have at the state. I think we got to continue to be able to provide those resources to our small business. I also work with economic development and make sure that they're focusing on the higher need uh, business uh, corridors in San Jose, which we know are Alum Rock, Story Road, and Santa Clara to make sure that we're providing the resources necessary and the funding where small businesses are also getting the assisted one-on-one uh, -on -one with staff at the city of San Jose or at the state. So bridging the state resources with city resources so that, that our small businesses have everything that they need so that That's they can fine. continue to provide for their families and be successful. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. Um, Andres? Thank you for that question. Um, based, uh, based upon the actions that have already taken, I think you can get an idea. The COVID pandemic hit, Allen Rock School District, we moved immediately, and we're one of the first districts to start providing meals to our entire community, not just their children. 6.5 million meals in 18 months. Went ahead and opened up our facilities, signed MOUs with the city. Uh, to go ahead and serve as disaster areas, as the places where we could provide services. Uh, afterwards, we went ahead and opened up our facility so we can go ahead and provide vaccinations. That's what I've already done as a school board member. Rest assured that I will continue to do what I can, do the most that I can, and do uh, the impossible to support our small businesses. My priorities are based off of direct conversations that I've had with small businesses. I'm very proud of the nearly 40 small businesses that have already endorsed and jumped onto our campaign because they know that I have a track record they can count on. They know that they can count on me to move uh, in a positive direction for them. So uh, what has been said, I agree with and good support. That's I know fine. that I'll be able to get in there, provide them the support they need. Thank you all for your responses. We're gonna pivot a bit to a different topic, um, but a very important topic. Um, how do you view criminal justice policies in San Jose? What are three specific changes you would make? Um, I am going to go ahead and ask uh, Nora to answer first. You know, thank you for this question. When I was in the assembly, I, 
I brought forward AB 80, which was a bill that would have streamlined the different departments of the state to work together. Because what we right now, currently, we do not have the different departments talking to each other. And there isn't a way to uh, support the, 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 the pipeline that we have where our young individuals are moving into uh, the different spaces. So I would actually take that same language, make sure that the county and the city are working seamless together to be able to address this. I also would bring back one of the components that we had where we had community leaders within the district or the city that were actually bringing individuals so that we're providing the services that they need instead of putting them in the pipeline. Um, I think once they get in the pipeline, we're putting them on a path where they won't be successful. But if we have community, I'm thank you. That's a hard subject to answer in a few. In one. Yes, um, Peter, go ahead. Uh, excellent question. This, um, this question is really important to me, given my life and uh, my past work and organizing in the community. Uh, I've, I've always have been and I will continue to be an advocate for intervention over incarceration, especially for our communities of color, uh, our undocumented communities and just our, our vulnerable populations. Uh, I believe that the city of San Jose, uh, to me, this is one and, and three, right? Because it's a, it's a huge undertaking, but they really need to adopt a um, fully funded uh, diversion program, right? In order to make sure that we are investing in alternatives to uh, incarceration for both our, our younger population and our adults, right? Many of our individuals have several factors to why they continue to be arrested, why they are more vulnerable to drug addiction or to homelessness. And unfortunately our city and you know, many times our county have, have treated uh, mental diseases uh, or homelessness with incarceration, right? When really what people need is mental health support, um, social emotional counseling, mentorship, job right. training, intervention over incarceration. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, Andres? Um, I think that we need to, obviously, there's significant issues that need to be addressed at the city of San Jose um, and other places, of course. That's why we've seen the actions that we have seen. Um, I have one immediate action that I think we need to, we need to provide is a support, we need to take on is the support that our law enforcement officers need. Uh, the fact of the matter is that most people, uh, 911 is viewed as a catch-all for anything, and it's not, it's not, it's not appropriate. It's not correct. We need to provide the right tools for the right situation for the for the for the situation. For example, the psychiatric social workers. Um, that's one avenue that uh, has been taken, and it, you can point to that to decrease the the incidence of violence that wind up erupting. I had to. I was actually uh, involved in a situation where an individual had to be called in because. He was having a crisis and he wanted to attack me uh, coming out of a store right here in East San Jose. Um, and so know it full well. Uh, we have uh, the public health department is triggered right from the uh, interview that's taking place over 911. Uh, all right. So um, thank you all for your responses. I do have one more question to ask um, you three before uh, opening it up to the audience to ask any questions they might have. Um, my last question is, the CPUC and Governor Gavin Newsom are proposing to limit discounts on solar powered homes, as well as how much money people receive when selling extra energy to utility companies. Is this just a give back to utility companies? Sorry, I need to pick somebody to answer first. Um, how about Andres? I think it is. Uh, CPUC has a horrible track record of looking out for PG&E. Uh, we saw uh, the former chair that was uh, married to uh, Senator uh, Carol Lou, uh, that was involved in going out there and looking out for the benefit of PG&E rather than the ratepayers. And so I think this is just another example of that. It's going to limit our ability to address climate change uh, because you're going to remove that incentive that's already in place. I fully stand against it. I'm sick and tired of the CPUC's uh, a modus operandi, and I think it needs to be addressed uh, through a serious overhaul of that, of that operation. Uh, so I hope that you can tell from my uh, position on the issue that I don't, I don't agree with it, and I believe that we need to continue to 
invest heavily in ensuring that we can uh, save ourselves from the from the path in which we're going, uh, right. which is. Thank you, Nora. You know, actually, th thanks for the question. I was uh, walking with the neighborhood leader in the Doburn uh, Capital Park area this past weekend, and one of the things that she said is that she would love to see solar panels on all her neighbors' homes, and and we had a, a discussion. So some of the things that I would make sure that we worked on that we can control locally is to make sure that uh, the city of San Jose uh, can create policy or move policy, uh, a framework that uh, the people that are installing the, the panels um, and the companies that are installed, that they're certified so that we know that when they're knocking on our, our, our community's doors, that they're not being scammed, that there is something that shows them that these are a legit uh, company and also making sure that they're being installed by uh, union laborers, labor uh, workers so that they're certified. Because I think that's another thing that we need to make sure that the people that are installing them have a skill set that will actually uh, be safe for, for our families. So those would be some of the things. Oh, thank you. It goes by so fast. Lastly, Peter. Yeah, no, I 100% uh, uh, believe that it is. Um, it's a handout to the utilities. I think that any uh, move away from renewable energy or disincentive for uh, renewable energy is attack on our, our future, the future of our children, right? Um, our government shouldn't be making it harder for us to um, benefit the environment, right? Should be making it easier. Um, so I, I'm 100% against that decision um, and, and willing to partner with this club to oppose it. Thank you all for your responses. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, open it up to everybody who may have a question to uh, you three. Um, if anybody does, please raise your hand. Um, I'll call in the order that I see uh, their hands are raised. Um, I do see Rosie's hand and then Helen and then Lillian. Um, everybody gets about a minute. <laughs> so why don't we start with that? And I see Michelle's after. Go ahead, Rosie. Hi, hi everyone and uh, welcome candidates. So my, my question has to do with what are you going to do if elected on a budget level and how are you gonna allocate resources for Isan Jose to look like other areas of the city. I mean, it's so unfortunate that basically that if you go to Isan Jose, I grew up there, my whole family grew up there. I mean, it just seems like the roads are real tattered. I mean, it, it's literally like going to a whole nother section of, of a country and it's right here in San Jose. So if you can just answer that and talk in terms of budget, not in terms of just vision. Thank you. I'll go if, if that's fine. Um, so to answer your question, uh, I agree with you. When I got on the city council in 2001 to, uh, to 2010, I was able to secure $100 million for Story and King. I don't know if you remember that. And so we made an investment. We bought four financial institutions and we brought uh, retail and small business and then took it across the street and also invested into the, the Amber Push Park so we could create a destination place. I will invest in our community and will make sure that I'm part of the, the budget uh, process. Um, I understand the budget so I can hit the ground running. I was able to secure back-to-back -back libraries. I was able to secure funding to pave just about every street. And that was 12 years ago, more than 12 years ago. Do we need to go back? Absolutely. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, but I have a proven track record in my experience and understanding the budget, which is not an easy thing to do, and also being able to work with the state so that we can get local, re we can get resources from the state to come down to the local government. So I will actually uh, make sure that I'm a part of that process. Uh, I've done it before and I know I can do it again. Experience does matter. Thank you for the question. Are you gonna call on us or do we just go for it? Yeah, um, go ahead, Andres. All right, so uh, I'm very proud of the work that I did right there as uh, Chief of Staff to Council Member Maya Sparza, having helped put together one of the more comprehensive memos 
that really called into call, called on the carpet a lot of the things that the city had been doing. And we had to go in in depth into the history of how East San Jose has been been treated. The fact that uh, we had the last uh, road that was still unpaved out here is very telling about the priorities for the city. And so those are the things that we called. It was very, very difficult, very tough. Uh, but I'm glad that I was part of the, part of the of, of the team that uh, you know working in support of council members Sparza to move that forward. I think I'm the only candidate here that's taking a public budgeting course that uh, knows what a line item budgeting, performance based budgeting, uh, at a graduate level. Unless other folks know and have done so, please to let us know. Um, but I'm very proud of the fact that I'm prepared and that experience does matter. And in the realm of, uh, of, of budgets, you need to know what you're doing in order to know where all the money's hidden. Uh, so it, it's part of the uh, of knowing the mechanics as well as knowing how to go after that money and making sure that we're able to bring it forward through an equity lens. Uh, and uh, obviously a lot of work has been done by I'm good folks like, uh, all right. So um, I've been born and raised here in East San Jose. I've lived here all my life and I could tell you the streets were no more cleaner 12 years ago than they are today. Uh, for, for, for generations, East San Jose has been underinvested in, uh, undercleaned. Um, uh, our parks have always been dirty, filled with, with uh, trash. They've been unkept, right? It, it's not something that has started with this council member. This is institutional with how our city has treated uh, East San Jose. Um, I think I, I've been an advocate for equity and the way equity should be utilized, especially in the budget. And I signed the equity pledge uh, as, as a, uh, a county board of education trustee. And I will uphold that one on the city council to hold the city accountable for spending their budget in ways that make the city whole, right? This, the East San Jose just needs more funds for cleaning our community. We need specific days where we can have community beautification days set where we could put out our trash in the street and the city can come by and pick it up. Unless we are increasing investment and in beautification in East San Jose through the budget, it's not going to get improved. I've done neighborhood cleanups. I've done dumpster days. I've organized them in the Mount Pleasant neighborhood. I've done them in Capitol Park in the Fox Store I'm area. Unless we increase the budget for beautification, it's not going to improve. Thanks for the question, Rosie, and for our candidates uh, answering it. Um, I'm going to call in Helen next. You're welcome to uh, ask a candidate directly <laughs> or um, a question at large to all three. I'll try to make, make it really quick. Can we can almost be a yes or no. Commercial linkage fee. It's a method of paying for affordable housing, which we critically need. We're way behind in our goals. We have certainly surpassed our market rate goals, but not our affordable goals. Will you take on a higher fee? Yes or no? Yes. 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 All right. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, everyone. Um, Lillian, you have the next question. Yes, um, especially to Peter and Nora, I believe. Uh, the equity pledge is kind of interesting. I didn't know about that. But I actually live in District 3. I just moved here. So I am aware of what is happening in District 5 and 3. I actually live off of Alum Rock and King, not far. Uh, I'm asking Nora especially, I, I looked on your um, site and you at one time had something going on with rezoning and zoning. So my question to both of you is, if you are zoning or rezoning areas such as schools that are closed or closed schools and now you're rezoning, are you developing that area to um, uh, you know, engage the East San Jose public uh, to, to benefit from that? Or what is happening with zoning and rezoning, especially to major school closure. Thank you. I, I can go, Peter, or you can go. <laughs> I went first the other time, so go ahead. Uh, no, so I, I truly believe that in regards to uh, school zoning, that's a local control issue. If it's an Alum Rock School District school or if it's a Mount Pleasant School District school within uh, uh, District 5, those decisions should be made in partnership with the school district. No council member should come in and start rezoning uh, uh, and impacting local um, uh, school, schools, school land uh, without um, collaboration with the governing board of that school district. That's, that's my opinion on that. And, and actually, I would actually um, 
work with the school district. Uh, uh, I wouldn't in, impose on what we need to do, but I would hope that we could look at the land if it is going to be repurposed for teacher housing. I mean, it's important that we create housing for our teachers to live here so that uh, they can, uh, uh, we can have some of the best teachers to, to, to teach our children. But I would uh, work uh, uh, hand in hand with the school districts. Um, we did work a while back when uh, the, the school district was thinking about building teacher housing at some of the, the schools uh, here because they have a lot of land, but uh, I'm hoping that we can have a partnership with them uh, before we rezoned it and, and, and imposed anything on them. Kathy, do I have the right to respond or? Yeah. I... Yeah, um, yeah, the district that actually uh, holds a vast majority of the area uh, in District 5, I am uh, open to ideas, to partnerships. However, uh, I don't believe that uh, school districts need to be told what to do. Uh, there is a clear uh, direction in which, uh, or, or a clear uh, responsibility, and that is to educate uh, our children. And uh, we have to figure out how do we best use our assets in order to help us fulfill that need. So I am not open to the idea that anybody else should come in to tell school districts what to do but partnerships would be welcomed, such as uh, the conversation that I'm actually chairing, the uh, workforce, the teacher workforce housing task force that's starting up, up uh, is starting up tomorrow. And uh, we're looking at what our options are, exploring ideas as to how we can go ahead and alleviate some of this pressure that's taking place on the housing market by providing affordable housing to our teachers, thus helping us alleviate also the teacher crisis and how to, how to address the teacher crisis because it's nationwide. There's a difficulty in hiring teachers. And so we wanna figure out how we can best use our assets to uh, help the community with the housing crisis, but also help us uh, entice more teachers to come into our district. So looking to take care of uh, uh, this two-pronged approach. Thanks for the question, Lillian. Um, I'm gonna call on Michelle, who's the last hand I see raised. Good evening, fellow Democrats, and thank you candidates for being with us. Um, I'm gonna ask you a question um, about domestic violence. Um, uh, as you probably know, um, we are very short on needed shelter beds and also short and long-term housing for domestic violence victims, but that's not what I'm gonna ask you about. I'm just establishing that it's a serious problem in, our, in your district. Um, one of your fellow candidates this week, um, Rolando Bonilla, was um, there were published allegations of serious domestic violence um, by him against um, his ex-wife um, his former wife stated in court filings that when she was pregnant, Benia, quote, grabbed her by the hair and shoulders, shoved her, covered her mouth and nose until she almost fainted. And also uh, stated in court papers that Benia grabbed me by my arms, pulled my arms, slammed my back to the wall, and then warned her not to speak about his family or she would, quote, see what domestic violence was. Um, uh, obviously, um, I think, and you know probably that I think, that um, these are very concerning and disturbing allegations that, if true, would make someone completely disqualified from holding public office. Um, since Mr. Bonilla didn't show up tonight, we don't have the opportunity to ask him um, about these allegations, um, but I am wondering if you would like to take a minute and comment on um, whether someone with these kinds of allegations against them should serve on city council and what that would mean for survivors of sexual assault if someone with these kinds of allegations were elected um, to city council. The the uh, issues raised are incredibly concerning, um, and uh, I it, it, it's it's uh, fair for the public to demand to know more, uh, so that uh, the voters of Isabel say through the with the totality of those facts can make an informed decision. And so uh, that's my position on the issue that uh, uh, the public is asking to know, and they sh he should. Uh, give them the, the facts. 
Um, if, if you don't mind, Peter, I'll, I'll go next, if you don't mind. Sure. Absolutely. Um, well, I was very saddened and, and uh, uh, to, to, to hear that. Uh, Rolando had this in his past, um, which we all should be concerned about. And I would agree with my other colleague that is running that the public should have access to whichever records that he's saying are not sealed. Um, the, the, the public has every right to know about these incidents uh, that are in anyone's past uh, or currently have happened within their time um, so that they can make a decision. But I also think it's very concerning uh, for me as, as a woman that has spent two decades uh, working in this realm to make sure that uh, women and families, and I'm not gonna exclude men because there are some men that have been victims of domestic violence. Time. Oh, uh, that's, I'd love to have a conversation because this is an important issue, but thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Michelle, for raising this important topic. You know, when I saw um, those allegations, I was extremely triggered because I myself grew up in a home of domestic violence those uh, allegations, uh, the, the language in, in there reminded me of experiences I had of watching my own father and mother interact. Um, and, you know, I, I, I agree. It's, if, if this is true, it's absolutely unacceptable and it needs to come to light. I've, you know, and I'm someone who have had a hard upbringing. I'm not a traditional politician. From the age of 12 to my 21, 22, I was involved in a street gang. I've never shied away from that. I've always, in every election, I've been upfront about my past. And I think that's what it takes to be elected and represent the community. You need to be upfront about who you are and the mistakes that you made. And then the, the, the community should make a decision based on that. Thank you. Thank you all for um, your responses. And thank you, Michelle, for that question. Um, I'm sorry, Sean, we don't have enough time to get to yours, uh, your question, but I wanted to give um, all the candidates one last opportunity to give a closing statement, a one minute closing statement. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. I'm going to uh, start it off with Andres. Thank you for the opportunity for writing this evening. Andres Quintero from Isa Jose. Um, I, you know, grew up in a very working class family. Uh, where we, we were very poor. And uh, mother always taught me that hard work is the way in which you move forward. You move yourself or your community forward. She went out there, cleaned homes for a living to provide for me after my mother had become disabled. And um, I am very proud of the, the hard work ethic that she instilled in me and in saying that uh, you need to hustle, you need to work hard to, to move yourself ahead, to move your family. I'm very proud. She never ever told me, hey, it's acceptable to go out there and jack somebody or do stuff of that sort. I'm very proud of that, uh, that I, I listened to her and uh, and that went ahead and moved forward, went and got a train, uh, studied at the state, went ahead and earned a graduate degree from there. I'm very proud of the work that I've done in the community through my elected position. And so um, I'm not going to shy away from that. I need to obviously state it because I believe I have the credentials. I know I have the credentials. I have the track record and the skills to hit the ground running and get work done in East San Jose. And so I would very much appreciate your support to help me get there by lending me your, your endorsement. Thank you once again for the time that you've provided me. I know it's precious. I've been there. I've been in through numerous endorsement interviews, just like you. And so I would appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andres. Peter? Uh, thank you so much uh, to the Silicon Valley Democratic Club for providing this forum. You know, as I mentioned, I'm not a traditional, you know, politician. I'm not someone who's worked in city government uh, where I've held elected office for over 20 years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm someone who's been a community organizer, a neighborhood leader, someone who opens libraries in their community, not closes them down for children. Someone who advocates, you know, for our working people. Um, I think that we need a fighter, right? Who's gonna be willing to, uh, fight for our families in East San Jose. And, I, and I'll be that champion for our community. Yeah. Thank you and I hope I can have your vote. Thank you and lastly, Nora. 
Thank you. Um, I have the support by uh, Senator Dave Cortez and him and I have worked in the past close together. I have been a public servant my whole life from my father who organized with Cesar Chavez to my mom who was an Alum Rock educator. And I will continue to work hard. I've been working side by side as a volunteer with the neighborhood leaders and I'll continue to do that. I may not be in office right now, but we have been working side by side to make sure that the issues that aren't currently being addressed in the community that are being addressed. I have been a Democrat my whole life and I have worked with all of you on many levels. And I will continue to be there with you even when sometimes we're not together, but my values are solid and they will continue to be solid. I hope that you consider endorsing my candidacy, but there are other uh, candidates that uh, also come to the table with some ideas that may be favorable to others, but I am all in and look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you for this opportunity. And I look forward to uh, the other discussions that we can have. Thank you. Thank you all for your time and for being here. I'm gonna pass it on over to Jenny. Thank you very much uh, for all the candidates' participation and also Kathy for um, moderating tonight. Uh, we're gonna move on to voting. Um, because our bylaws require, uh, sorry, one second. <laughs> because our bylaws require a 60% majority uh, of the vote in order to do an endorsement, we may do two rounds of voting uh, for this race. So the first round will have all three candidates um, and I'm going to go ahead and post the uh, Google form in the chat so it's available now. Um, if no single candidate gets 60%, we will do a second round of voting with the top two vote getters. So uh, go ahead and vote using the form that's posted in the chat. If you have any technical difficulty, uh, feel free to post in the chat or unmute yourself. We'll leave the form open for two minutes. Uh, then we will do uh, count the vote. Um, so go ahead and get started. Maybe during this interlude, I can interject something. Is that possible, Jenny? Uh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that we had three great candidates and I really um, appreciated how engaged all three of you were and how you kept getting cut off by the time because you had so much to say and are so passionate about these issues. So um, sorry about the short time of the questions, but um, I really appreciated the, you know, the commitment of all three of you. And I see we have one more person that just joined. I'm gonna repost the voting form, uh, which will be open for another 45 seconds. The voting form is now closed. Uh, we will begin tallying votes.
And while those votes are being tallied, I want to remind everyone that after this, we are going to have a vote on a resolution regarding uh, the allegations against Rolando Bonilla. We'll go ahead and post the resolution uh, in the chat so you have a chance to review it um, while we're waiting. It is a close vote, so it'll still take a couple more minutes. I'm going to go ahead and share um, Monterey Bay Aquarium's open sea cam. All right, so uh, the top two vote getters, neither none of the candidates reached the 60% mark. 
Uh, so the top two vote getters are Peter and Andres. So we're going to have a second round of voting um, and I will post the uh, form in the chat momentarily. So the um, form for voting is in the chat. This is the second round, so make sure that you vote. The voting form is closed and we're tallying the votes.
All right, uh, the votes are in and I'm pleased to say that Peter Ortiz has won the endorsement of the Silicon Valley Democratic Club. So congratulations, Peter. Congratulations, Peter. Honored, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your vote of support. Truly honored. Oh, you're muted, Jenny. Thanks, Peter. If everyone can stay with us for just one more minute, we have a final vote uh, for the resolution. Um, I'll go ahead and pull it up on my screen. So uh, the resolution being presented today is calling on Rolanda, Rolando Bonilla to end his campaign for San Jose City Council and resign from the San Jose Planning Commission due to domestic abuse allegations. Whereas the Silicon Valley Democratic Club advocates for policies and people that value gender equality and respect for others, acknowledges the vital importance of believing survivors and is staunchly against domestic and intimate partner abuse. And whereas according to media reports, Rolando Bonilla's former wife stated in court filing that when she was pregnant, Bonilla grabbed her by the hair and shoulders, shoved her and covered her mouth and nose until she almost fainted. Bonilla's former wife also reportedly stated in court papers that Bonilla grabbed me by my arms, then pulled my arms and slammed me, my back into the wall. And that Bonilla warned her not to speak about his family or she would see that what domestic violence was and stated that Bonilla was given supervised visits with their infant and that Bonilla was ordered to domestic violence counseling. And whereas Silicon Valley Democratic Club stands with survivors of sexual, domestic and in intimate partner violence and Silicon Valley Democratic Club furthermore believes that candidates and office holders should meet the very highest standards of personal and professional conduct. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Silicon Valley Democratic Club finds these allegations that when he abused a pregnant woman to be deeply disturbing and we believe it is in the best interest of the citizens of San Jose that Bonilla withdraw from the campaign for San Jose City Council District 5 and resign from the San Jose Planning Commission and any other public office. Um, and actually I'm gonna turn to Michelle, our parliamentarian. Do we need a motion? We do need a motion, <clears throat> but I actually, um, uh, let's see, we need a main motion to pass this, but I see an amendment and I apologize to the meeting, but I there's an error in there, which is technical, but still is an error, which is that it was anger management counseling, not domestic violence counseling. So with your permission, before I make the motion, um, I'd like to change that to anger management from domestic violence. Um, alternatively, we can, I can move the main motion and then also move an amendment, but I think it might be easier before we put the motion on the floor if we just correct the mistake that I myself made. And is the anger management counseling? Is that still? Yeah. Okay. So I think we can yes. um, just go ahead and make that change. Yeah, make that. Okay. Change. So I'll I'll move the motion to be passed, um, and see if I get a second. Is there a second? Please unmute yourself. I'll second it. I see Pete seconded. Um, any discussion before we vote? Feel free to unmute yourself. I'll second it. All right, uh, voting form is posted in the chat. Seeing that there's no discussion, I'm gonna call the question. Uh, please um, use the form posted in the chat. Uh, this Wait, is I, have a, I have a, it's not really a discussion point, but I, I do wanna say that, um, that um, I, I agree that he owes the public that information. And I want to point out that he was at the reason that this mo that this motion that this resolution calls for him to step aside rather than provide the information is that he was asked repeatedly by different news organizations to provide that information, including the spotlight and the Merck. And he um, 
you know, he he's he's not provided it. So I don't think it was, you know, really the right way to handle a motion a resolution like this. He's had the opportunity to provide um, any exculpatory uh, documentation or information, and he has failed to do so, to my knowledge. Okay, resume. Okay, um, and since this is a resolution, not an endorsement, it requires a simple majority to pass. So I will leave the form open for one minute. And then we'll count the votes. The voting form is closed and we are tallying the votes. While we're counting the votes, um, I want everyone to know our next meeting will be on April 18th. We will be having uh, candidate forums for San Jose City Council District 3 and District 7 at 7 p.m. This is the regular time of our general meetings, the third Monday of the month at 7 p.m. So hope to see you all there. Um, so the motion the passes uh, overwhelmingly. Uh, so the Silicon Valley Democratic Club supports this resolution. Uh, thank you everyone for coming tonight and we hope to see you all on April 18th. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Everybody. Great job. Thanks to all the candidates. Thank you everyone. And Kathy. And Kathy. Thank you everyone. Kathy.